Hello and welcome to this ETEM webcast. My name is Uwe Schmitz. I'm a product manager at ETEM Industrie Technik in the division automation. Today I will guide you through our ETEM motion designer and we will configure a linear unit. We can access the ETEM motion designer from the ETEM internet pages under configurators. It's an online application, browser-based, so uh, what you need is just a browser. Uh, the first page that you get from the ETEM Motion Designer is the page that we see right now here. Um, it gives you the choice to select either the product catalog. Um, so for those who exactly know what products uh, they are interested in, they have the, the option to just get a list of products and you can choose uh, the products that you, you already know. In case that you don't know the products that you need, you know the application that you want to implement, the detailed configuration is the way to choose. The detailed configuration gives you in the next screen the opportunity to choose a linear unit with a moving carriage, so the axis is fixed, the carriage is moving. This is the more usual configuration, uh, but there are also applications mainly in the vertical case that you can have a fixed carriage and a moving axis. Um, what we are planning to do right now, just as an example, is to configure a linear unit that can carry a printer head. So it's a printer head that is hanging on a linear unit. It should have a weight of 10 pounds. Uh, the linear unit should have a length of 100 inches. And we have a repeatability of 0.1 millimeters and we know the maximum speed should be 200 inches per second and we have some information about the acceleration, the maximum acceleration that this printer head should have. So based on that knowledge we start here with uh, our choice linear unit with a moving carriage. Continue brings us always to the next page so we can also go back by the way so in case that we want to change something. Um, here we see the basic requirements the basic requirements. What do we mean with basic requirements? It's the information on the repeatability. So in case we know what is the requirement on the repeatability, we can choose that here. If we know which drive technology we prefer, we can select or deselect a drive technology chain or rack drive or timing belt. Um, you don't have to make a choice here. You can leave it as it is and have kind of the open field of all possible uh, um, uh, opportunities here. But in case that you know that, for example, chain is not the, the draft technology that you like, you can pre-select it here. Further on, environmental conditions. Um, some applications need a very clean environment. Some may need a more dirty uh, environment, so that would pre-select mainly the draft technology. And other operational parameters like duty cycle or a maximum lifetime could be selected here. We leave it as it is, so that should be our starting point and it matches well to the requirements that we have on the, on the print head uh, that we want to implement. In the next step, uh, mounting arrangement. Of course, the uni linear unit could be vertically or horizontally installed, even any position uh, is possible. Uh, in our case, we are choosing the horizontal position. Of course, we want to print something, so horizontal is our choice. Um, the printer carriage is mounted hanging, is hanging on the linear unit, so in our case we would need to have the carriage on the bottom. And uh, you see here from the graphics, it gives you a very good picture on how, how the final application would, would look like. Um, after that, we are going to the dynamics, means we are defining the motion profile and the load that should be carried. Under manage loads, we can give more details on what is exactly the load that we want to put on our linear unit. First of all, we can give it a name. Um, we can freely give a name, so I do print head, print head. Um, the mass, I mean the weight, should be 10 pounds. And you see here that little diagram that shows you the x, y and z axis. So in most of the cases the load is not 
um, in the center of gravity of the carriage is sitting more to the z or the y or the x axis which of course creates a momentum or an extra force around the carriers that should be calculated as well. So here further down we have the fields where we can put in the distance that our load has from the center of gravity. So for our, uh, for our little example we choose um, two inches. Um, by the way, there is also, you see here, the, the, um, the opportunity to not only add loads, but also forces. In our case, we don't have an external force, but there may be applications where this is required, and that gives you also, like here, the chance to, to add this force also. Um, I'm saying save load, and we see here I've created a load, which is called printhead, and uh, it has the, the details here further. Um, we can... Uh, we can create lots of different uh, loads, up to 255 loads can be added here. So also in cases where you have changing loads, like you, you fill something, you empty something, you can add different loads here and, and work with them. In our case we just have one load, the printer head doesn't change the weight. Um, we move further to uh, defining the motion, so this little button, add motion. Uh, opens the screen where we can uh, define the motion. Um, looking here, there is the possibility to define the type of motion. Here the default is a triangular, which means we are accelerating to a defined maximum speed and then deaccelerating back to zero. And it's a constant acceleration up and another constant acceleration down. Um, the type can be changed, like we can have a constant move uh, one third of the time, or we can even define free moves or pauses or whatever. So in our application, let's let's have the try the uh, one third uh, constant move here. It's it's the best thing I think we can do for the printer head because it moves constantly uh, for a certain distance. The target position, it's the full length of the linear axis. We said it should be 100 inches. And uh, we here have the opportunity to choose either the time or the acceleration or the maximum speed. So that what we know we can add here. I said when we started we know the uh, maximum speed that we have of 200 inches per second. Um, we just pick the load here, it's our print head. And you see here the other data is being calculated with the, with, the, with the good old Newton formulas. So once you know one parameter, it calculates the others. So we can also play around and, uh, and add whatever we know about our application. So that's, that's the first motion that we created and I save it. Okay, we have now defined the motion one, which means that we move from a start position to the end position with our load printer head. And we could now add a motion to the same way just by adding motion and define it. But there is also an easy way back in the uh, motion designer, just which we say return to start position. It predefines everything that is required to move back to the start position and just save the motion. And you see we have added now the motion two, which moves us from the start position back to the position zero and we now have moved our printhead just one movement. The diagram here shows exactly the movement here that we defined here. It shows the accelerations, the speed and the distances that is being applied. That should be okay for our little example. We could also add up to 255 motions with different loads, different forces and really create a pretty complicated uh, motion profile. We can also save what we just did on the project management as a project and go further as soon as we know more about our application, we can add more details. In our example, we just have now two motions and a load. And if we click now, continue, the motion designer shows us a list of all linear units that fulfill the requirements that we just defined. So we have found two linear units that K 
can carry the load, it can fulfill the requirements of speed, acceleration and repeatability. We get more information on the details if we click here the information button. There is also a filter function, so if we know now even more about details on the, on the system, we can now choose here filter parameters and even uh, filter more linear units. There is also another function that we can compare different linear units. So I'm choosing how now here the linear unit called KLE and the other one which is KRF. If we say compare now, we see the two linear units that both fulfill our requirements. We see here the list of requirements that we, form, that we gave as a technical detail. We see here the technical data sheets of our linear units. So we can see what is the requirements that we could fulfill. So if the requirements would increase, the load would get higher or the requirements on acceleration or speed would get higher. We could see what margin we still have in our system and maybe select the one that is, let's say, more, more future-proof. In our case, I'm selecting uh, the KLE, I say accept. Um, and if I'm saying continue, I can here add further details like a proximity switch as an accessory or uh, even tools or track all other um, additional products that I could that are necessary for the linear unit. Um, also here there is the option to download the technical information as a PDF file. So I'm opening it and this file is being generated at runtime. So it's exactly the description, the technical space, uh, specification of the linear unit that I've chosen, including the accessories, the proximity switch that I just have chosen, and my requirements that um, I gave coming from the application. Um, and here the capacity. For example, also the maximum speed, the maximum torque that is at the linear unit. Uh, the graphical description, our mounting position, uh, up to the tension of the timing belt that I would have to apply to the linear unit. Um, in most of the cases, the linear units need a motorization. So also I have here all data that is required to find the right motor. The torque, the speed, the maximum torque, the maximum speed. All the information that I need when I'm looking at a data sheet to find the right motor is being uh, presented here. So this helps a lot to, to find a motor from whatever vendor uh, you would like to, to work with when it comes to motors. Going back to the motion designer, um, there is also the possibility to access the CAD, the CAD data. So in any CAD file that is being used in the world, like step data or other, other file, we can download the CAD data of the linear unit and integrate that into our design software and then further work with it. So when I'm creating a complete uh, system that consist of a housing or linear unit, I have here the, the opportunity to download my CAD data and, and um, put it into my construction work. We are almost finished with the presentation. The next step would be to add the linear unit plus the accessories that you've chosen here to uh, the cart. Uh, when being added to the cart, you can directly purchase or you can ask for a quote from your, from your partner in your country. So it depends a bit on the country setup, what you can do here. Um, the motion designer gives you the opportunity to move all the data uh, to the cart and you have everything in place to really ask for a quote from your partner or vendor. Today we have configured a linear unit with motor and controller. Thank you for joining us today. I hope the information provided was helpful to you. 
Further information you can find from our internet pages in the section Automation.